Okay, it is two o'clock and I would like to call the September 24th, 2024 meeting of the Capital Planning Committee to order. It looks like we have a quorum present. And uh, the first item of business is, uh, as we always do at our first kickoff meeting, we'll have our town treasurer, Linda Sanderson, uh, give us a brief overview of what we're looking at this year as far as the uh, finances are concerned. And then we will be meeting uh, later on a few after um, Linda's through with the public safety departments and the school department to uh, take a deeper dive into their capital requests. So Linda, if you're ready, we are too. Okay, I'm going to see, I'm going to try sharing. Looks good. Looks really tiny. I'm here. Are you seeing it? I'm seeing it, but uh, this old man's eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So, okay. Can you, can you blow it up a little bit? Yeah. So, uh, I I'm not sure that in the past that. Paula, that we have started with the full 10 years of requests when the, uh, I think we were have been dealing with it year by year. Right. And Is that right? Yes, absolutely. And I actually was thinking that you were going to continue to look at, you know, the current year to fiscal year 25 requests for the special town meeting. And, you know, we maybe can talk about the other. Okay. Other, uh, year's request actually at a different okay. meeting let's do that a sure. after we take care of all the business to have a whatever it takes two or three meetings to take care okay. of fy 25 and then have a, a second or third meeting yeah. later so these, on. these all went out to members so I, so I just want them to understand this is uh this two pager is the 10-year one went, and i will jump then right into the are you seeing this the 25 request is the one with orange yes Okay. Yes, looks good. If you can, any chance of blowing that up a little bit. Okay. Looking good. Okay, so this one, I took the requests uh, from the one I was just showing you, and you've looked at it, that, that they are the columns are by years. This is just the FY25 column pulled out into, um, uh, into a single year. So all the 25 requests are here. And uh, rather than group by departments, but we, we do have the group by departments and that's what we'll go over when we speak with each department. But this one, uh, just so that we think in terms of budget, this is a capital budget, how much do we have in each? When we look at the bottom line, when we're looking at um, the total request this year, $2.2 .2 million. And it's just kind of stunning and, uh, but, if you look across all the years really are going to be like that. And we have some very large requests coming up, but then we break it down into our different pockets of where the money's coming. It becomes more manageable and we can make decisions within each of these pockets. So uh, starting um, the two general categories I have are here, this um, sort of orangey yellow one says borrow. There's various ways we borrow and then go down, oh, that should have been orangey too, I don't know what happened, but reserves, cash, and, and budget is our other category with the various cash reserves there. So starting with uh, the debt exclusions, um, I basically went through and we pulled out all the larger items. We are going to be doing debt exclusions in the spring um, so that uh, that was one reason that town meeting was moved to a little bit earlier um, oh no, that's not what happened. Elections were moved a little later so that we can go to town meeting if we have a debt exclusion, that there is time to get the ballot portion of the debt exclusion onto the uh, town election ballot so, um, so that there's not a need for an extra, uh, an extra election when we have debt exclusions. So the items that went into uh, were, were the larger ones. Again, uh, the public safety there, the, Public safety is looking for a driveway replacement. And the school has a number of requests right here. I'm, I'm sticking with their original request, which was 613,000. And I know that they met last week and there's going to be some revision, but it's probably still going to be in this ballpark, the total requests. And we're, we're working together to see if we can get this into a single uh, uh, 
renovation, a single article um, that would work for them. So those larger items, uh, that's almost a million then coming off. These will have to be debt exclusion in the spring. Uh, it's possible if we uh, if we have some extra cash or if we have room for doing a little bit more borrowing within the levy or payment out of the sources that we could move. Uh, for example, I'm not I'm only looking at this because of the dollar amount, but the largest amount here is fifty five thousand. Perhaps there's another way of handling a smaller item. On the other hand, if they're going to bunch them all together into a renovation article, then that's probably the way we should handle that. So our second category of borrowing is within the levy. This is one that we're trying to keep uh, that the payments that we have out of our general fund for payment of borrowing within the levy is uh, it's a little a little higher than five hundred thousand right now. Um, as just a few years ago, it was about one hundred forty thousand. We've been moving that up because this seemed to be a, a good way to be handling some of our capital needs is doing the shorter term borrowing within the levy. Um, so we're trying to keep that total under five hundred thousand. We got ahead of ourselves in the last couple of years. There have been a lot of needs that have uh, that have backed up, and there are also a lot of um, capital expenses, uh, capital items that we were not going to be able to. Um, uh, we weren't be able to get them for a couple of years, and so, but we, in order to order that item, we had to vote them. So we have a number of things that we put on. Um, that we got ahead of ourselves. I think one year we had, um, you know, somewhere close to 700,000 in borrowing. So at some point we have to back that off uh, so that what we're borrowing stays more even with what we're paying each year. If we're borrowing half a million in, in, uh, to cover capital needs. We should really not be voting in more than a half a million dollars. And that's disregarding the interest aspect of it. Um, so Lin Linda, how much yes. are we, how much debt are we amortizing off this year? I think it's um, I think it's five. Uh, it is about five hundred thousand in the in the general fund. I think I just closed that uh, budget out, but yeah, pretty close. I think it's maybe it's five hundred and twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. And uh, be, with the interest having gone up the last few years, a, a larger portion of it is becoming interest as opposed to principal. So we're not getting as much. Um, as much out of a, a five hundred thousand dollar payment as we were at one time. So the interest, that, I mean, the total payment that you're talking about included the interest, not just yes. the prin principal only. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. How much of that do you have? Any just a ballpark of how much was principal? Uh, Rough. You know, it doesn't have to be exact. Yeah, I, you know, I like to be exact. Um. Yeah, I because I have. Let me get that last. Uh, let me get the twenty four budget up. This is hope you are not seeing my budget, are you? No. Okay. Yeah, I just try to keep those, some of this stuff off screen. Okay. Hello, oh, Setzer's office. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the levy was looks like we spent a short term short term notes. Okay, so over 400,000 of it continues to be actually 467,000 of the 500 was principal for 24. And we had uh, 29,700, almost 30,000. So it's, yeah, 30,000 in interest. So out of our, out of our $500,000 payment on our past within the levy debt, close mm -hmm. to 470,000 of it was principal and 30,000 of it was interest and so um, it looks like you know we're looking at a hundred or 342 for principal in the upcoming budget so that's within that uh, amortization amount right uh 
what's the 342, Paul? That's the, within the levy borrowing in the FY25 request that you have on your orange sheet. Yeah. I have 240,000 plus, oh, I say plus half of the, um, half of the excavator. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, well, on the sheet I have, actually, I'm looking at a print on it. says 342,500. Okay. Within the levy. Yeah, it looks like the figures changed since I printed these out. Then. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> on here, so look at this. And, and we have been playing. We've been meeting with uh, Mike Mason. And I met with a couple of department heads and made some shifts for this reason. We're trying to find out what we can put into, what we maybe can move out of borrowing and into budgets and find other ways of paying for them. So the... What I have right now is two hundred forty thousand, but that plus uh, half of the excavator, which is one hundred and fifty five. So that is uh, borrowing in the in the levy would be three hundred ninety five thousand. Right. Okay. Plus and that puts us a little bit on the easing off of the five hundred. Yet, yeah, if we need to put some more in there, then we need to put it in. But it's really better for us if we keep it under the five hundred, unless we ask for an increase. Um, in that line item um, and that really depends on how much cash we've got to work with this year so the amount the items that we're talking about borrowing within the levy then would be the there is a fire vehicle for seventy five thousand. whoops about seventy five thousand for the fire vehicle uh we have um this is uh storm water work the ms4 is more uh storm storm water work for the highway uh buildings and grounds we need a um hvac system for town hall and then, as I said, half of the excavator. Uh, in addition, borrowing that we have to be paid out of Water Enterprise Fund, that would be the 380,000 for the backwash tank. And again, half of the excavator needed by Water Highway. Um, when we do meet with department heads, we talk about how badly do you need this? Can we put it off a year? What would that look like if you had to decide between these two items, what would you pick? So um, I we've made a point of not eliminating anything out of what is being shown to Capital Planning Committee as requests, but we do some shifting around as to what where we're suggesting that the um, funding come from. And uh, we, uh, would if a, if agreeable with the department, we would try and put something off a year. So, so, so Linda, the same question again about the water enterprise has a debt been amortized at least to, in the amount of what is being requested here. So in water, we've been paying about two hundred. Uh, Without without interest, to excluding that. No, no, that includes interest. Uh, two hundred seventy thousand. Oh, that includes. I'm sorry, it's got the long term borrowing. I don't have that figure quite as well itemized in something that I have handy, but I can get it for you. Um, because it includes the, what we're paying out of the bonds, and we do have quite a we have borrowing in there. So I can get. I will, can have that for next time when we do have DPW with us as to where we stand with the water and the sewer fund. This time there isn't, there's no additional borrowing from sewer if we can help it. Um, I think that's one of the ones, Paul, that you had on your list for borrowing, but we're trying to bring it down into reserves. Um, so these, these borrowings would be out of, uh, to be paid out of water. And that is quite a bit. It is higher than our annual amount that we pay out of whoops, water, not sewer. I'm sorry, water we pay. We pay about 300,000 a year out of water, but that includes bond payments too. So this is high. We have been talking with Scott about what we could do, um, whether one of these could wait. Um, and I don't wanna speak for him, but we, we but we do have um, sort of a partial resolution of something that we would authorize now and, and wait uh, till spring so that we can bump it off of a year of borrowing. So we've got some more work to do there and he's not able to be with us today. So that's kind of it for the borrowing, nothing new on uh, in sewer. So water is the one that is a little bit, uh, has a, a little bit higher, a bit higher of a reserves. Um, 
but what what do they have right now? Over, they have over three hundred thousand in reserves. Wait a minute, that's the budget. I'm sorry. They have seven hundred seventy-five thousand in reserves. But we have to be careful with the water one because, the, if you recall, we uh, authorized a borrowing of six million dollars for the tanks in the spring mm -hmm. tank meeting, and there is a year in which we are going to have to pay an extra three three hundred fifty thousand out of reserves for that the year where the tanks overlap with the Callahan Wells borrowing, which would mean paying a double that year. So we don't want to overdo it taking out of that account either. On the other hand, we are having um, the, the water and sewer rates have uh, increased um, and how much of it is going to operational versus capital sort of remains to be seen. So Paul Benjamin has his hand up, Paul. Yeah, just a quick question. This is my first time with this particular um, spreadsheet. There's a couple items where there's no cost out. Is that because it, they're not being asked for or we're just pushing them back? For instance, oh. Sander, you know, uh, there's quite a few spots where there's no right. money. Well, you, want to, you want the blanks explained? Yeah, um, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I, I can do that. This is the a, newbie. remember the, the first sheet that I showed you, the one with the blue one, the one with blue on it, and you have a printout of it, and I had it on very briefly at the beginning. That shows the entire 10 years. I am experiment. I, I am working for the first time with pivot tables. So I, you start with the main chart and you do a pivot table. Well, to, and I pulled out 25. But if you list, if you list, it wants to list all of the departments. So everything came out of there. What it means if it's blank here is that that item is there or that department is here and they have one in a later year because it was a 10 year request. So it doesn't mean that we put them off at all. It just means they requested it in a later year and Sorry, they don't have you. anything for 25. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I just now I could have answered that myself. But yeah. just, just at the same time. Thank you. for. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, I'm not completely satisfied with this layout. I also don't like the way all these numbers, like if you look at backwash is repeated here three times. I wish we didn't have to subtotal every little thing, but I, I'm still working with it because I find um, that eliminates having to retype the things into a different spreadsheet. So I'm, I'm trying to make that something that we can work with a little more easily. So that's it on the borrowing. And the everything else we try to fit into cash um, either an article coming out of the cash fund, which would be general fund or water reserves or sewer reserves or Hadley Media Enterprise funds. Those are our, those are our four buckets of, of cash that's available. The other way to tap into those cash reserves is not do it as capital at all, but see if we can work it into the, into the budget. Um, and uh, we have spoken um, on, on a couple, um, with a couple of, well, all departments were saying what we can fit back in. If they've got a, a particularly small item, um, let me look at the thermal imaging cameras. Can we just increase their budget by $7,000 or by $5,000? Can we just increase it or, or can we just see where you are at the end of the year and see if there's funds to cover it out of the budget? Because um, at, this, at this point in the year, uh, it's hard for anyone to tell whether they're going to have funds at the end of the year. Budgets, we try and um, strike that balance in budgeting between having um, have, having enough to cover some contingencies, but not having enough to cover all. So it's when we get closer to the year, we'll have an idea of whether whether these can be covered by some of them. So general fund items are the uh, uh, department of uh, the uh, dispatch computer, the thermal imaging cameras uh, cameras for fire, uh, libraries looking for um, uh, computers for public use. Uh, the school has some, again, school is, is doing a revamp, so I'm uh, not holding them to any particular item. Um, uh, highway is going to put the, uh, is, is willing to put the truck body uh, into vehicle repairs. Uh, tree work, the reason we moved that down here is he's, would be, again, wanting to get, he's um, agreeable to getting that into the budget and not having it as a, um, not 75,000 increase the budget, but spreading it out over the next few years, say increasing that budget by 20,000 a year to cover more tree work than has been done. Um, things like that. We've got the, uh, 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 Alex uh, has requests for the enterprise fund. Um, Alex and Patrick are here as is uh, the fire, I think fire, 
and uh, police to talk about their items. Sewer has some transducers needing replacing. And there's a bunch of things here down for the water. Uh, Mount Warner match, we may not need that. Uh, the cabinets, uh, the Callahan well water pumps replacing. So those would be, if we can have them paid direct out of the water reserves at some point. So that's how we would, um, so my, my initial my initial swing through of these is uh, an assumption that with all those requests, if they were all to be approved, where, we, where would we put them? And when it stretches one of these uh, items, because I think that water reserves is stretched a little tight, can we then talk about whether we push things into another year or find another way of funding it or, or spreading out the funding, which seems to be um, uh, spreading out the purchase and the funding seems to be uh, something where we've had a little success this year. So any questions? No one has any questions for Linda? Paul does. Just, just a quick one on the reserves. Do we have some minimum that we maintain in the sewer reserves and the water reserves just because it's for emergencies? We don't have a minimum that we have been. Um, I mean, is there best practices? No, we, sh it, we should. We have run into issues with the sewer reserves this year. Uh, it has come before select board and there will be a sewer hearing next week. We have had, um, we certainly have tried to keep uh, as much in reserves as we could. That is one reason um, the rates were raised last year because mm -hmm. both of the water and uh, sewer reserves funds were uh, being dipped into each year for the budget. Um, and then in sewer, we got hit very hard with increases in uh, the sludge expenses right. and some, um, and the need to hire an additional person uh, to avoid having to hire an outside company to come in and do it right, I guess. Uh, so we've had a number of, he'll, and again, poor Scott, Scott's not here, and, um, but he, okay. he would be able to explain that. But so we did really get hit hard with sewer reserves. If, it, if you consider it as an emergency fund, we've tapped into that this year as an emergency and we have to replenish it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, why don't we move on to the uh, individual departments uh, discussing their request. And on our agenda, item number three, we have the school department. So Superintendent McKenzie, if you want to start off, you have the floor. Well, if, if you, Annie, did you want to? Because I, I had an email out that I thought that they were going, wanted to wait. But Annie, if you want to go. <laughs> well, what well, I would or, prefer, I'm certainly here. I, I just... What I would prefer, Linda, I know you guys are drowning, but after our school committee last night, um, I sent to you and to Mike Mason uh, a couple of thoughts on adjustments. I, I just don't want to overstep here and I don't want to confuse things. So, I mean, happy to summarize what the school committee said that I don't, if that works, but is, does that make sense, Linda? What do you want me to do? I have not incorporated any of your changes in yet, Annie. Yeah, so that might just kind of, so, Annie, would you want to defer to next week? Is that what you're implying? Yeah, so I, what I would ask, I'm just all about being your problem today, Paul. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to not be a problem. I am actually unavailable entirely next week. I am I am away next week. And, and so I'm, I don't know if there's other options. I can see what else we might be able to do. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a problem on every front, it feels like right now. Um, are you only meeting next week or do you have other? Uh, well, I was thinking we'd like to because we have to bring in the uh, DPW. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, today we could do public safety and the library and have the media. But right. if we defer, but if you're not here next week, we may have to have a third meeting the following week to go over to school request. And I guess the advantage, too, now I understand the town meeting has been deferred, too. That's what I wanted to make sure everyone understood. We have a so little more. Gives us a little more wiggle room here. Yeah. And so, again, I'm happy to summarize what the school committee discussed last night, if that's helpful, around how we're proposing that our request may change. Is I, that I helpful, think it, 
I think it might actually make sense to give Linda a chance to review it and then add it to okay. the plan. Yeah. Um, and then if we can have a third meeting, we do have more time because of town meeting being pushed back, we can we can handle it that way. And then the first available day that we have the capital committee available when you're back, Annie, we can then bring you in and, and discuss it. And Annie, you are available the week after next week, correct? Yes. I most certainly am. Let me go to today. And most certainly am. That is the week of October 7th. Yes. 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 Good. Yeah, I, it would be better. I agree with you, Mike, there, that we should probably have everything set down more in concrete. Yeah. Two weeks so from I definitely now, want to so. give them a chance to understanding to incorporate whatever was uh, that what I sent over that we were thinking, and also, um, just so you know, we may be able to do it that Chris Desjardins could just report in my place next week. So I also don't want to inconvenience all of you. So I'm just here to listen and try to be helpful, and I'll stop using up your time. And that's an option too. Too. Okay. Annie, uh, if um, if Linda and I can uh, have a chance, and uh, Linda can insert, you, you know, your two emails into the capital plan based upon your discussions with school committee. Do you think Chris would have a problem presenting it next week? No, or? no, that's easier for you. We'll work it out with Chris or uh, Chris. Pitt too, not yeah. Linda, have you had You're a fine chance? With that. That's fine. Linda, have you had a chance to review Annie's emails yet? Um, I actually have. I, I haven't. I saw she sent them and then I saw she sent it, uh, you know, a follow up one. Uh, but but I just haven't. Do you think we could? Uh, yeah, that's. I just. I don't want to pressure you either. I mean, you may need yeah. the extra week just yeah. to, just to make any adjustments. So, I mean, if we need the extra week, we just push it back one week. I really don't think it's going to hurt anything because we have, basically, we pushed off town meeting by three weeks, so we have a little more time. And as far as I'm concerned, I could go either way, you know, so it's really up to you, Linda, because, you know, you're the ones that has to put this all together. Oh, I can have it for next, I can have it for next week, but it's nice, uh, but it's also fine the week after. Um, if It depends on how long you want to meet each time and are, is, is Tuesday, is it two o'clock a good time? Is that what we're talking about? Well, I know next week, if it were Tuesday, I'd have to wait until at least three. I don't know how that works okay. with everyone else, but. Okay. Sure. Are, are you thinking the total that you would have three meetings? Paul? Um, if, yeah, because we have to vote anyway. We have to discuss and vote on the packages after we talk to all the department heads. So we may go into three anyway. Well, if we're gonna if we're gonna go into three meetings, why don't we do this? Why don't we, <clears throat> Linda, can add it to the to the capital plan, and then next week we can review it. And um, Annie, I mean, you could have Chris present if you'd like, and if he feels like he can explain it, great. And then we don't have to have the third meeting if he feels like. Um, maybe he can't do a good enough job. Paul is suggesting that we're going to have to have three anyway. So then you could come back week three and do it. So Chris is available. I just called him. Sorry. That's why I turned off my camera. He can be available for you Tuesday at whatever time you say next week. And we'll make sure. He's well, why don't we go down that route? And if everyone else is in agreement. Is the rest of the Capitol Committee available t next Tuesday at 3 p.m.? You said, Paul? Yes. That's October 1. Bill? Yeah. And Paul? Yeah, 3 o'clock's fine. One, two, three, and uh, David? Yeah, I should be good with that. Okay, so we have a quorum. Okay. All right, let's let's try that. And if everything falls apart, Annie, when uh, when Chris is explaining it, we will we'll just put it on for the week after. <laughs> no, 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 I won't. And you said three p.m. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank. You. Yeah. Okay. So if 
since we're going to defer the school department, uh, we're looking for volunteers who wants to go first. Hadley Media, Public Safety. Yeah, I'll go first because the... we got a soccer game and like I got to get ready for it in a half hour. Um, okay. so I'll be, although I'll be very quick though. Um, we're gonna take the five grand we're requesting. I told Linda and Mike by email that we probably should adjust the our budget by five grand instead of going to capital planning for this year. And then worry about our channel server coming FY 27. 27, two years off then. Correct. So, well, that's you, fine. Yeah, this is a department. It, they routinely ask for $5,000 in, in, in uh, replacement equipment each year. It should be a budget item. <laughs> And not this, and, and not a capital. When you get to the, his later items, uh, the channel server that's that's different. Yeah. So, so this would he would come right off the capital uh, request list if that's uh, good with good with everybody. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And uh, we have a similar situation with Patrick. All are not quite so even. So. Uh, Patrick and I did talk today about uh, taking that what he, what he wants uh, is is to get computers and then five years get another group of computers. And I was talking to him about getting one or two a year, and he's got he's got there's some pros and cons of that. So I think it's best to let Patrick take it from here. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Uh, thanks for having me at the meeting here. So what we're trying to do. Um, as you know, we're a relatively new, we're in a relatively new facility. Uh, when we opened to the public, well, when we were in the process of outfitting the library, um, it was during, it was sort of in the middle of the pandemic, the library was not open yet. So we were, we erred on the side of um, conservatism in terms of the outfitting of the, of the, of the building, because we didn't know how long the pandemic would persist, how you know, how busy it would be when we were able to welcome the public back into the building. And so what we did initially was we bought, so there, there are 20 spaces currently where public computers can be set up um, in the main space and in the children's and young adult room. We essentially filled half of those with computers at the outset when we first outfit out, went through the outfitting process for the building. Um, what we're trying to do now is fill the second vacants or the second 10 vacant um, set of spaces with public computers so that they are now all full because we're starting to see, you know, on many occasions that the demand we're, we're pushing against the limits of available computers. And so my thought was in making this request that it would be more, it would be efficient for us to essentially have the computers replaced in sort of in two generations that just keep sort of piggybacking. So these, you know, these first 10 will, you know, go another four or five years um, in use. And then the second, you know, the generation that we're asking for now, the 10,000 that will buy us another 10 computers, those will be in use for, you know, seven, eight years down the line. And we'll just sort of replace them in groups of 10. Um, I think from my point of view, because I do a lot of the, um, I assist in a lot of the, the work of actually getting the computers up and running and deal with a lot of the troubleshooting. It makes sense to me. It's preferable that all of the computers or at least groups of 10 of them be of the same generation and of mm -hmm. the same make rather than having, you know, year over year, slight changes in hardware um, that may, you know, each generation will have its own unique hardware problems and sometimes their issues. It's just a lot easier to maintain the computers when they're they're roughly all the same. Um, so that there's that. Um, but that's essentially what we're trying trying to do with this request. And it, you know, I think it's it's fairly straightforward. The computers themselves are about a thousand dollars a pop. Um, and uh, and as I said, we you know these these computers are in high demand uh, by you know adults, children, um, teenagers coming in after school. And uh, I think it's it's time that we expanded our offerings. Great. Any uh, any questions that anyone has for Patrick? 
And it looks like this is coming out of the general fund. That's the proposal, like reserves or free cash, Linda. Yes, if um, I had it coming out of free cash general fund in the thoughts that it was going to go into his budget. Um, if he, So the, the alternative is to um, you know, borrow the 10,000, but um, we'd rather see it come out of cash. And if we can do it in the budget, um, that would be uh, that would be best. Mm -hmm. except, except when we put it in the budget we like to have even amounts just like what happened with uh, the Hadley Media it's like 5,000 it's in there what I don't what, what's less um, what works less well is to say $10,000 increase in the budget this year and then then account for that for the next uh, for a couple of years we don't like the up and down we like to come up with an even number so that it's a regular part of the part of the um, the, the budget without having to account for it whether it's on this year or off this year so we're still talking about that. Okay. Anybody else? Well, thank you, Patrick. You're welcome. Appreciate it. We'll take it under consideration. And now we move on to the uh, Public Safety Department. Mike and Mike, you have the floor. Thank you. Mike, do you want me to go first? Do you want to go first with your police? Uh, no, go ahead, Mike. I don't, I only have, uh, I don't have much. So go ahead and get rid of the big stuff. Okay. All right. Um, so the public safety side of the house, that's Mike and I, um, we also had a meeting together with Linda and, uh, so the, basically the 300,000 that you're looking at for a driveway repair or replacement, uh, we had actually discussed holding off on that and kind of came up with a hybrid approach to this. Um, the $4 million that you see in FY26, that's based upon the uh, we the uh, study that was done uh, in the town in 2012. Um, that obviously that cost at that time was $1.5 million or something like that. So this has grown pretty substantially since 2012. However, being a 24 hour a day, uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year, lights are always on here. And with increased staffing here, this building is taking a beating. Um, we're already maxed out on space. And Mike, you can chime in whenever you want to if I'm missing anything. But instead of asking for the driveway expansion right now, which we think is putting the cart before the horse, um, we're and obviously a $4 million ask is, is substantial even for next year, knowing that we have a DPW building that's in disrepair. Uh, what we're looking to do, and we had discussed what that amount would be, we're trying to see if we could maybe do a five-year or a 10-year plan of getting a lower amount just to try and just try and to stay level here. So it's so we're, you know, for example, our windows. Our windows are existing to the 1996 building. They're starting to, you know, you try to open them up and they come down like a, a hatchet. They're not, they're not, we're not weather tight here. Uh, we have issues with garage doors. We have existing garage door openers for doors that are open, you know, 10, 15 times a day. Um, so we're looking at trying to chip away at some of the smaller projects. And I was asked to have a quick conversation um, on what we thought might be a reasonable number. And we were looking at 50 to 75,000 to try and chip away at these projects over the next 10 years, rather than asking for the $4 million um, up front. So that's that we want to hold off on doing the driveway because if we were going to do the expansion of the bay, we would have to redo a portion of it anyway. So it doesn't make sense to right. tear it up again if we're putting in new. Um, and there might be some additional infrastructure that might need to be done as part of that. Um, so that was that was one of the things. So the 300000 would be coming off. I don't know how you wanted to discuss the potential of that seventy-five thousand, but that was the the first first discussion. So you'd propose to lower that figure to, for this year to seventy-five thousand. Yes, and it wouldn't be specific to the driveway. It would be for maintenance projects within the building. Okay. So, for example, the the police sally ports. The existing garage doors, uh, this is a project that wasn't, the money was returned, uh, I want to say probably five plus years ago. 
uh, for putting new insulated doors on both the sally ports for the police department and then updating the rear doors on the fire side with new openers because our openers are breaking constantly. Our doors are actually locking up at points. We had one that actually fell down because it broke. Um, so that would be one of the projects. The other one was the, we didn't have any insulation and we've been talking, we, we are trying to have a conversation with the, uh, is it the energy or the green, green communities committee, um, about possibly being able to use some funding for insulation, but it sounds like it's extremely specific on what you can do. Um, we actually were supposed to be insulating the ceiling inside the Sally ports as well as part of that build out of the new doors because there's no insulation. So when the doors open up for cruisers to come in and out, that heat or that cold is then impacting the fire department's offices with, I mean, literally our feet, you can feel the cold coming through the floor uh, or the heat. Um, and, you know, PD is extremely good about trying to keep those down, you know, if, if possible, but still um, that's an issue. So we were gonna see what we could fit in and chip away at with that 75,000 and then revisit it next year. And then, uh, you know, 10 years down the road, once everybody's got a hold of everything else that's going on, maybe we could see, come back again and see about the the expansions that are we're gonna be desperate for because we're just, we're tapped out on space. We're using space underneath roof lines, uh, you know, Chief Mason's office, we broke into an area under the roof line so he could have some storage. We did the same thing here off of our kitchen. so. We're being very creative about what we can do, and we're trying to do it in-house with our own crews doing it and working under Gary Berg. Uh, you know, he helps us out with his CSL, so having folks do it in-house to try and save funding. So we are chipping away, but uh, we thought this might be a better alternative. That sounds like a good plan. Any, uh, does anyone have any questions for the fire chief? And Mike, the only, you know, I'm kind of jumping ahead to 26 here with that four mil, but you know, or whenever that happens, is there any possibility of any kind of grant money that is out there for a project such as this? Yeah, we are continuously looking for that. So I can tell you um, it's extremely difficult for an AFG grant for a station renovation. Um, that's a really, really, tough one to crack, especially because we're a public safety complex. Uh, they wouldn't fund it because the police and dispatch are here. They would fund maybe the ha fire department portion. But again, it would be that would be an extremely difficult one to ask. But we certainly can we could give it a shot. Yeah. Just asking. Yep. Yep. Um, so that as far as I'm concerned, the sum of you know for 2026, this has been a placeholder. This is a, has been in here since that report was done. So it keeps getting moved back. So we understand that it's probably going to get moved back to FY29 or whatever, but it's been in here kind of like the ladder truck. It was in there for, you know, 10 plus years. Um, so we were trying to, you know, we're trying to keep you up to date on where those costs are. Um, so anyways, that's, that's what we're, that's, that's what we came to for a conclusion on how we might be able to get some projects done for public safety. Great. Well, thank you very much. Does anyone else have any questions? And Linda, do you have any? That pretty much wraps up our departmental presentations. Uh, Linda, do you have any closing comments? Actually, I have a couple more for you. I got the fire oh, department oh, side. He's got, yeah. like, oh, you're not done with us yet. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, so that was the public safety. So that's police, fire, and dispatch uh, in all together. And then the fire department side, um, we have the 75000 and that's for an administrative vehicle. Uh, I did want to tell you that uh, we were just notified yesterday or two days ago. I had a conversation with Chief Mason um, and Molly. We have we have another really great opportunity. Uh, not that we aren't desperate for this administrative vehicle, but we're trying to we're trying to uh, prioritize the needs of the department. You, we have a 2009 ambulance that we received for $20,000 that's been very active now as a second line ambulance going out after our action EMS. Uh, we have an opportunity to pick up another used ambulance. The current going rate, as you can see, for 2026 for a new ambulance is 
with a three-year build time. Um, uh, we have an opportunity to pick one up for that $75,000 from Adams Ambulance Service, which has gone out of business. They have a 2022 ambulance available with the equipment that's needed in it, mostly. Um, mostly. So we were discussing changing the request for an administrative vehicle to a replacement ambulance because we're concerned if our 2009 goes down, we are now back at square one with not bringing in those second calls for revenue and building this department like we've been working so hard to do. Um, so we wanted to bring that forward to, to see what your thoughts were. Um, and again, that would push back the 2026 request. Uh, that would get pushed back. And I can tell you we are Again, going to be applying for an AFG grant to see if we can get successful for a new ambulance. Um, again, another tough one, but we are going to give that one a shot now that we have our ambulance in service with our, you know, we're actually pushing forward to become ALS for the town. Hmm. Uh, so that's that's what we've been working really, really hard on. Uh, and the second portion is the $7,000 for a thermal imager. And I will, if if we want to wait until the end of the budget, we can certainly do that to see if I can just, if I have the extra uh, funding for that. Um, we are also, we also do have a grant coming up, uh, the fire equipment grant. We need two thermal imagers right now. We have two that are actually out of service. They can't be repaired. Um, the cost of these, we've been fortunate to be able to get some lower cost uh, thermal imagers. Uh, the ones that we purchased originally were over 20,000. Uh, luckily, technology has kind of caught up with everything. So we have we have found this thermal imager, which I think is quite good, um, which is obviously a lot less than that um, at 7000 So again, we're willing to wait until the end of the budget to see if we can fund that. And we will also be applying for that uh, fire equipment grant to see if we can get that second additional one. We just we wouldn't have enough money in that grant to cover both. So. OK. Good. And anyone um, else? Yeah, Mike, um, what does that mean for the administrative vehicle? You'd move that into next year? Correct. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Anything else to discuss? I don't think I see. Oh, Dispatch? I have, Dispatch. Yeah, I have one thing on for 25. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to talk about the rest of it, but um, 26, uh, uh, Linda and I have a plan to try to reduce those costs. I'm going to, for the ballistic vests, I'm going to, I'm going to try to start getting those on a kind of a pattern, uh, replacement so that we can pull it out of capital and just start to buy them out of the budget. But that hasn't started yet. So I, I can't take it out just yet. Um, as far as, uh, 25 goes, I have one request on for, uh, police and dispatch, and it is just for a new departmental server. The good news is, is that um, the community compact grant, which hopefully, uh, well, I should say, community compact grant is designed to fund items just like this. So hopefully if we get it, we won't need this. Unfortunately, the grant doesn't open this year or this time around until January 6th. So I do need to request this amount um, just to make sure that it's in there and whether or not we actually borrow for it or borrow all of it. If we get you know, a portion of the grant or something like that, there's a good chance that we will only need to use a portion of it or none of it uh, if we get the grant. But that's all I had on for 25. And there is a plan in place to get, you know, to request the full amount through Community Compact. And we've gotten the Community Compact couple of different times before um, neither time from what I can recall it was funded fully but um, it was funded substantially both times that we've gotten it in past years so um, I feel pretty pretty positive that we'll do we'll do well on that one That's yeah so you'll leave this on as a contingency depending on whether or not you'll get the grant yes sir excellent well, I wish you good luck with that too, Chief. Thanks. And I think that does wrap it up. Uh, Linda, any closing comments? No, that's it. I've got some new information here today and I'll work it uh, through. 
input to the school and these changes on fire and what we talked with uh, Hadley Media and library. So we'll have, um, we'll get that worked into the new picture and get the new list out to you. So each time I'll just go down a little bit. <laughs> what we want. Excellent. Yeah, a lot of good, <laughs> a lot of good information today yeah, really helps to find, fine tune everything. So um, based on that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. And I understand we have to take a roll call vote to adjourn. So um, we will start with David Phil. David? Yep. Yes. Okay. Bill Bannock? Aye. Paul Benjamin? Yes. And Paul McCretzky? Yes. The meeting is adjourned at 251.